Hello and welcome to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to use the TIGWELD 200SX to make a welded aluminum bracket for a neighbor of mine that needs this built for his aluminum downspout. So there's the finished part and let's take a few minutes to see how we get there. Here is the bracket that I started out with and using a saw and a shear I cut up the pieces that we needed to make the parts. We'll do this one over here first. It's a little easier to see. So I'll get that set up there right there. Then I'm going to take the other clamp and I'm going to come around and I'm going to put it on this side here. I'm going to turn that on and that'll hold that piece in position there until I get a chance to get it tack welded. So I don't want the part to move on me, so I'm going to go ahead and put a flat bar across the top of it there. And then use one of the strong hand tools clamps to hold that angled piece down there and make sure that it doesn't move or doesn't come uh, out of alignment while we're putting the tack welds on there. So, so that's something aluminum can do is move around quite a bit uh, when we're welding it. Uh, you can see sometimes those clamps, they uh, max out on the thread there, and I just kind of backed it off there and then retightened it. So we're going to go ahead and get the torch here. Uh, using Then I went ahead and went and removed the clamp so that we could move on to the next operation. So with the first side tack welded on there, I decided to flip it around and get the other side uh, into alignment there. So once again, using the same technique, using these magnets as a straight edge there. Also put another piece of flat bar down onto the top of it. And then once again, positioning the table clamp to hold that piece in alignment when we're making the tack welds. So once we got that clamped in position, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a tack weld on the bottom here first. Once again, when that's down against the table there, that can take a little extra heat, a little extra time uh, before it actually makes the, makes the tack weld. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to move up to that upper corner there and get another tack weld on that as well. Now with the subassembly repositioned, we're going to get set up to make the weld. So I'm trying to get the weld positioned so that it's in a, a horizontal or flat position so that it's easy to weld. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use, a, once again, uh, same outside corner joint here. Uh, we're going to use that 4043 filler. Once again, about 100 amps on the pedal. I'm all the way on the pedal at the beginning here get the part hot and then as I move and progress across the joint I slowly back off the foot control as the part starts to heat up and the aluminum starts to warm up. So we want to make sure we add enough filler metal in there to keep the joint full and complete all the way to the very end there and make sure that we add a little bit in right at the end. Okay, with that side done, I'm going to go ahead and spin it around here, get set up to do the other side. Once again, holding the, the bolting surface or the surface that's going to mate down to the uh, other adjacent surface with those bolt holes there. Okay, good idea to always wire brush or clean up your material. So we're going to use the flat bar on the other side to to clamp it down so if I use the clamp as I do on the left hand side there uh, the clamp would be in the way and it would make it difficult to weld uh, so once again I'm gonna go ahead and get that clamp down hold both of those sides 
and then we'll make that weld right there. So keeping in mind on the second half here, uh, the first weld on the first side uh, already warmed the part up, so it's a little bit warmer on this second half here. Uh, it's going to weld a little quicker. Once again, just adding just enough filler metal to keep it full, but not too much that it rolls over and gets overlap or that beer belly effect when we're going in this horizontal position. And you'll see when I get to the end here, it's not quite filled up. That's okay. That's not a sin. We just relight that arc and add a little bit more filler metal in right there at the end to make sure that it's full and we don't leave a crater crack or an area of de uh, depression there at the end of the weld that could cause it to crack at a later time. So with those two sides welded up, now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put the small cross member that goes into the base of it here. So we'll get that positioned in here. Looks pretty good. Looks like it fits in just right. I use a piece of filler metal here to double check and make sure that it's not going to be too high and going to interfere uh, with the mating surface that it has to clamp down or bolt down to. And once again, going to go ahead and get it tack welded into place. So I'm going to put four tack welds here on it on the four adjacent corners. Make sure that that's in place first. So I see a lot of people, they go in there and uh, don't adequately have the part tack welded together. Uh, before they start to make welds, uh, and then the pieces and parts start to move on them, uh, and when they get to the when they get in end with it, uh, they don't quite have the part that they were anticipating or hoping to get. So always make sure that you get all your parts tack welded together in the proper configuration before you put too much weld on the part. It's always a good idea to keep the torch right there close to the joint until the gas times out to help keep the, keep the joint clean and keep the tack weld clean so it's not contaminated when we go to make the final welds. Hope you learned something. Thanks again and have a great day.